With the Democratic National Convention opening tonight, it's a good time to look at what a Clinton presidency will mean for Israel. ILTV's Steve Leibowitz sat down with veteran Israeli diplomat Yoram Edinger to find out more, who says that Clinton would likely continue to implement the same policies as Obama administration in the Middle East. Hillary Clinton has, has a track record uh, in the Senate. Hillary Clinton has had a track record uh, during her campaign all of which suggest that she will sustain more or less Obama's national security policy. Obama's national security has deteriorated the globe into a very, very uh, low level of stability and predictability. Obama's national security policy has provided tailwind to the enemies of America in the Middle East and beyond, and Obama's national security policy has provided headwind to America's Arab allies in the Middle East. It seems to me that Hillary Clinton is about to persist in Obama's policies rather than introduce a change. A change is not consistent with Hillary Clinton's uh, record. And a change is a critical requirement for the globe to regain its sanity. So you're saying in effect that Hillary Clinton could be pro-Israel in her attitudes uh, and her voting record and her feelings, but that she is not going to change dramatically in any way the uh, Obama administration's worldview and its willingness uh, to defend uh, the traditional positions of the United States. For the sake of the U.S. and Israel, uh, an American president must be aware that dealing with rogue regimes requires also the use of military. And an American president who makes it clear that he or she prefers negotiation with rogue regimes rather than confrontation with rogue, rogue regimes does not enhance U.S. national security and a weaker USA is bad for Israel irrespective of how the president feels about uh, Israel. But most importantly, it seems to me, one should be aware U.S.-Israel relations do not depend on the next American president entirely or not even mostly. U.S.-Israel relations have dramatically catapulted, expanded, in spite of the fact that every single American president, from Truman to Obama, has pressured Israel. In fact, many times involving boycotts on Israel, uh, our arms embargo on uh, Israel, uh, abusive language against Israeli uh, leaders, denial of critical loan guarantees to absorb Soviet Jews in Israel. But still, strategic cooperation militarily and uh, economically have expanded beyond imagination. The reason is that there are other factors which are more powerful than the president determining U.S.-Israel relations. And those factors are first and foremost the American constituent who, going back to the arrival of the Mayflower until today, has been very pro-Jewish state, very pro-Judeo-Christian uh, values, irrespective of the Palestinian issue, Jerusalem, or uh, settlements. And equally important have been the representatives of the American constituent in the House and in the Senate. They have been consistently, systematically pro-Israel. The issue of Israel is one of the very, very few issues of consensus in the American public and in the corridors of Congress. And that is the major factor producing enhanced U.S.-Israel relations, as important as is the president, with all due respect, the president is not the omnipotent determining element of U.S.-Israel relations.